Nistanbul Minaka, um, welcome to another devotional. Um, my name is Barma Nanga, and the topic for the theme for this devotional uh, this week is heavenly versus demonic wisdom. Amen. Um, this is something that I, th I believe is very relevant for us in this day and age uh, as Christians to be able to discern, to be able to identify in ourselves first and foremost, and also in those that we surround ourselves with. Um, you know, ensuring that whatever company we're keeping and that also we, um, in our own walk with the Lord, are able to be getting or are receiving heavenly wisdom and not dem demonic wisdom. Um, my sharing today is will be taken from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13, um, right through to 18. And I'll read that for us from the New King James translation. And it reads, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. What a powerful passage of scripture and one that is so full of wisdom and so full of nuggets of truth that we um, really need to make ourselves aware of and really need to be in tune with as we walk with the Lord in this day and age, because we are getting, we are in an era where, you know, this, especially within the church, son, uh, the, the enemy is not working outside of the church alone anymore. He is coming and he is infiltrating our very churches and, you know, the, what he's, and he's running riot, you know, confusing, you know, providing, um, creating confusion, creating chaos within our very midst. And one thing that's really important, one thing that you know, the Lord is really highlighting um, to me and I believe is relevant for all of us as Christians in this day and age is to be aware, is to be awake to, you know, how to identify if something's from God or something is the work of the enemy. Because this is the thing, is there are two sources of wisdom. And like the scripture I just read to you denotes, one is heavenly, one is demonic. But what this passage of scripture has really outlined for us is how we can identify if something is heavenly, something is from God, or something is from something has a demonic origin. And what I, you know, when I when I looked up what you know demonic wisdom is, is it's it's like a, it's fake wisdom. You know, it's what it does is it and, and anything actually relating um, to evil or relating to the enemy, because this is the thing about the devil. Is he is very cunning. He is, he knows exactly how to how to present himself in a manner to us, where it, and he knows exactly where our spiritual levels are. He knows exactly what our submission levels to God are. He knows exactly where we're at spiritually with God. So he comes at us in a manner that he knows if he disguises his wisdom in this manner, we will fall for it unless we are awake to what Scripture tells us. Um, you know, and Scripture gives us like this one, very clear indications of how we can distinguish between heavenly and demonic wisdom. And like I was going to say is the thing with the enemy is he knows how to present it. So he, he won't come at you directly, um, you know, with a demonic wisdom that's obvious, that's plain to see that it's demonic in origin. What he will do and what he always does is he mimics, he tries to mimic God or he tries to mimic godliness in the manner that it will allow you to to fall for it and once you're in it he then has you you know he then holds you captive but what it will first present as is it will be wisdom but superficial wisdom you know it will appear um to be true until you fully examine you know the root of it and in one clear way you can examine anything uh whether it's from god or from from the enemy is you just check the fruits Check the fruits of that source of wisdom. It never lies. Fruits don't lie. Fruits never lie. So if you're ever wanting to, to um, compare or wanting to identify whether you know a source of wisdom is demonic or heavenly, just check the fruits. 
of that source of wisdom. Amen. Um, just going into the first verse of this heaven, you know, of the, dis the distinction between heavenly versus demonic wisdom. First of all, the word wisdom in the Greek um, language is, you know, it's the word Sophia. And the definition, the, um, the Greek definition for the word wisdom is the knowledge and practice of the requisites for godly and upright living. So you can already see why the enemy has, uh, would want to come and pose himself as wisdom. Because, you know, as the definition I've just read you, it's the knowledge and practice of the requisites for godly and upright living. So if he can deceive us from the get-go, that the wisdom we're receiving or the wisdom we have is godly or is from heaven or is from God, then he's already, you know, he's already have, he already has a foothold in terms of our knowledge and the practices for godly and upright living. He already has that in to, into our lives. If, you know, if we're, if you, if we're not in tuned that the source of wisdom that we're getting or the source of wisdom that we have is demonic. Okay. Because like I mentioned in the definition, the, the, the Greek word Sophia and the definition for the Greek word Sophia, which is wisdom, is the knowledge and practice of the requisites for godly and upright living. So that's his first in into our lives is if he can, if he can um, uh, deceive us in terms of the, the wisdom that we have, then he already he can then dictate the, the way that we live our lives, you know, fooling ourselves in terms of fooling us that the way that we're living is, is actually pleasing to God when actually it's in direct opposition to what God wants from our lives. And <clears throat> starting from verse uh, 13, you know, the, the word clearly tells us one of the ways that we can immediately identify whether a source of wisdom is heavenly or demonic. And it says, who is wise in understanding among you? Let him show by good, doc good conduct. It says, show, not say. You know, so a source of so a wisdom that is heavenly will always have good fruits to back that source of wisdom. It, it's not just lip service wisdom. It's not just, um, you know, full of talk, but it walks the talk that it's talking. So if, if someone is giving you counsel or if you are in your uh, own capacity are giving someone um, counsel or you trying to in your own capacity judge whether you are living your life wisely or whether you have a wisdom that's heavenly is check your fruits check their fruits uh, and check um, the good works because what what this word you know verse 13 is telling us is those who are wise and understanding should show by their good conduct that which is done in meekness and that's the other thing so not only will they have good works to back up the wisdom that they have but it will be it will be coupled or it will be accompanied by meekness and meekness is humility and this is this was one of the qualities that jesus was known for and quite often meekness can be uh, misconstrued for weakness but i'm here to tell you my brothers and sisters is meekness is not weakness it is strength under control Amen. And this is what the word of God is telling us this morning, that one of the ways we can identify whether a, a source of wisdom is heavenly or demonic is first and foremost, is it will be accompanied with good works. And backing the good works is the humility, is the meekness that comes from Jesus. Amen. And so that's <clears throat> um, the first two ways that you can identify between um, these two sources of wisdom. Now, this is verse 14 dives into what is the root of you know, what is the very root of a lot of the, the ways in which the enemy gets a foothold into our lives and, and uh, manipulates us and allows us, you know, enables us to then be uh, um, an instrument of the enemy, of the devil, instead of being an instrument of God. And it says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, my brothers and sisters, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Amen? And then verse 16 says, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Now here's the key, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> envy and self-seeking. Envy and selfish ambition are the very gateways into our lives, are the very gateways that the enemy needs to bring every other evil, it says, every confusion and every evil thing into our lives. So when we have, or if we have any form of envy in our hearts, if we have any form of selfish ambition or um, self-seeking, you know, if we only seek for what's best for us, what's good for us, what works for us, what um, suits us, 
That is selfish ambition. That is self-seeking. You're not seeking, you know, because the word of God exhorts us to seek for the best of others. Amen. We are never exhorted to seek for what's best for us, but we're always to look out for one another. We are carrying each other's burdens. We are to, um, um, uh, we are to uh, not only carry each other's burdens, but we are also uh, exhorted in the word of God to forgive one another and also um, make allowances for one another. So there's always an exhortation in the word of God to look out for the good of others. But when and what the word of God here is telling us is when we have envy coupled with selfish ambition or self-seekingness in our hearts, that is the very foothold, that is the very doors that the enemy needs. And he only needs a window. He only needs a gap. He only needs a blind spot in our lives to enter into our hearts and run riot within us. And before we know it, my brothers and sisters, he is using us as the very foothold. He is then able to use us as the very instruments and very people to attack our fellow brothers and sisters. Amen. So this is why I bring this to you this morning, because as we journey with one another in our walk with God, it is important that we are awake to the work of the enemy in our lives. Because if we're not careful, he will use us to attack others. Amen. <clears throat> and like I mentioned, that is the, 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 the other two ways that we can identify if a source of wisdom. So if you're looking within yourself, if there's selfish ambition, if there's envy in your hearts towards something else, towards someone else, that, my brothers and sisters, is something that you have to deal with first and foremost. God can't use a dirty vessel. God can't use a vessel that is envious of someone else's calling. God can't use a vessel that is envious of someone else's life, my brothers and sisters. Why? Because he has given you your very own calling. He has given you a life that is worth living. You simply need to answer the call of God in your own life. You simply need to exercise the gifting that he's given to you, my brothers and sisters, instead of being envious about someone else's. You can't, he can't bless you know, he can't bless a, a, a gifting in, in you if you're busy converting someone else's calling and someone else's gifting. Amen. You can only use what you have. You can only give what you have. And if the Lord has not given you, has not bestowed upon you a gifting that you're converting in someone else, my brothers and sisters, it will come to nothing. All you're doing basically is harboring envy in your heart and what you're effectively doing is allowing the enemy to come into your life and run riot and in the process use you to be a vessel to run riot in everyone else's life so my brothers and sisters my exhortation to you this morning is check your heart is look within before you look externally look internally all of us and this is me included if we have envy and self-seeking in our hearts those are the very things that we need to work on most those are the very things that we need to deal with First and foremost, before we look to do anything for God, because like the word of God says, where those two things exist, confusion and evil, every evil thing are there. You know, then it bursts things like jealousy, it bursts things like discord, it bursts things like disunity, disharmony. You know, every evil thing that you can imagine comes from those two root things, which is the envy and self-seeking. Because if someone is only seeking for their own best interest, they will not care about what their actions are to someone else. They will not care about how their um, the words that they speak impact someone else's life, how their words discourage perhaps someone else's calling, how their, um, their actions perhaps might uh, be a stumbling block to someone else. When they selfish ambition, when they're self-seeking in our hearts. These are the very lifestyles that we'll be known for. We won't be, you know, like the word of God uh, told us in verse 13, good, good works should be what accompanies us. But when it's demonic wisdom that's ruling us, that's running us, we will not have any good works to back up what we're saying. Instead, what will be the trail of our life is discord, is causing disunity, is jealousy, is causing chaos within every group that we're a part of, in the family units that we're in. We're always in, in some kind of um, um, some kind of involvement with evil because these are the very two things that we have dealt with. Amen? So that's my, um, and I think what I'll leave us with is one, you know, some of the things, some of the traits that we should definitely cultivate and definitely be able to identify with those. And not only for ourselves, but also for the counsel that we are receiving. Is like I mentioned before, is look at their fruits. And, you know, one of the evidences, as from verse 17 to verse 18 tells us, is some of the evidences of wisdom that's heavenly or wisdom that's from God is one, humility. It always is backed with humility. It's honorable. It's pure. You know, and when I say pure is to the pure. And there's a verse in Titus that says to the pure, all things are pure. 
Amen. So when your heart is, when your mind is pure and when your heart is pure, everything that you think, everything that you do and uh, uh, the, the motive of everything that you do will always be from a place that's pure. And everything that you see will always be from a place that's pure. Amen. So that is another, um, you know, another uh, way to identify whether wisdom uh, that, that you have or that you're receiving is honorable or is from heaven is it is there always is a form of purity amen there's always a, a form of holiness from that wisdom and i think it, the other the thing that mentioned is mentioned in verse 17 is it's not only pure but it's peaceable so wisdom that is from heaven wisdom that is godly is always peaceable it always tries you know for the unity of the body of christ it always seeks for peace it always promotes peace Never discord or never um, anything that's en that creates envy or creates strife. Amen. And the other thing uh, the word of God tells us in verse 17 is is gentle and willing to yield. Amen. Now, when you have a servant of God or when you have uh, um, someone that you seek godly counsel from, where you notice that one of the fruits of their life is they they're always willing to yield to someone else's, you know, yield to others, you know. Because what, what we are reminded in verse 13 is good works accompanied with meekness. Our willingness to yield is a sign of humility. But when you're always insisting on your way, when you're always insisting to, um, to have the last say, when you're always insisting that you're right, my brothers and sisters, quite often that stemmed from either selfish ambition, self-seekingness, or from a place of envy. Okay, so always that's another way that you can check whether the wisdom you have, the wisdom you're receiving is demonic or heavenly is if it's seeking always to have its way then my brothers and sisters quite often more than not it's demonic and not um, heavenly and full of mercy full of mercy regardless of what is done to the person that you're getting wisdom from or that you're getting good counsel from or from even if it's yourself your ability to always show mercy because of the mercy that you've received from the Father, it's something that you always reciprocate, my brothers and sisters, and it's heavenly wisdom that you have or that you're giving. And um, life, uh, finally, um, last but not least, um, without partiality and without hypocrisy. My brothers and sisters, one, you know, like I said, good works always follows those that have godly wisdom. And also, there are no, hypocrisy is, shouldn't be something that you're identified with. Okay, because like I said earlier, you're meant to be living whatever it is that you're uh, giving, uh, dishing out. So you're, you're meant to be walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So hypocrisy shouldn't be something that's identified with someone with godly wisdom. And if it is, my brothers and sisters, then we really need to just um, examine, examine ourselves and really reconnect ourselves back to God and ask him for guidance in terms of how we can get godly wisdom and not um, demonic and sensual wisdom. Amen? The sensual wisdom will always seek for its own pleasure, will always seek to gratitude, uh, gratify the flesh, will always seek, like it, it's self-seeking, it's never for the best interest of others, it's never for the best interest of the, of the majority, it's always seeking for its own. And when it doesn't get its own way, it's envious of anything else that is uh, deemed to be getting in the way of that. So always look for those um, signs and you know, just be mindful, just be awake. Um, to the two, to the two differences. Amen. Thank you. I'll just pray for us. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this lovely morning. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your reminder to, to us today, Father God, to be able to discern between heavenly and demonic wisdom, Lord God, that in this day and age, you are really awakening your children to be able to um, distinguish and first and foremost within our hearts, Father God, to be able to remove our, any envy or any self-seekingness in our own hearts, Father God, and also to be mindful of the counsel and the godly uh, and the wisdom, the supposed wisdom that we receive from others, Lord God, checking fruits first within ourselves and within others, Heavenly Father, ensuring, Lord, that the wisdom that we receive is from you, um, that will only, uh, and if it's from you, Lord God, it will just, it will develop us, it will grow us closer to you and it will make us look us more like you heavenly father lord we thank you for this reminder we thank you for this word and we give you back all the glory and honor and the praise and i pray for everyone that's reading this um listening to this right now father i pray lord that you will give them godly wisdom that you will give them discernment and allow them enlighten the ears and eyes of their understanding heavenly father so that they may grow in wisdom um with you in jesus mighty and, and we'll never forget to give you back all the glory all the praise all the honor that's yours and yours alone our father in jesus name we pray